In this quick start video, we're going to set up Keycloak in a Docker Compose environment. Then we're going to explore how authentication works through a very concrete example. First, we're going to create a realm in Keycloak, our authentication space where all users and their corresponding roles are stored. Then we're going to register a client in Keycloak, which essentially sets up a valid authentication pathway, such that when a user wants to access a protected resource, like an API endpoint, they're going to need to authenticate through this pathway. And this authentication request requires both a client secret, which proves that it's a legitimate authentication request, and the user's own credentials. If both of them are valid, Keycloak issues tokens to this user that grants them access to that protected resource. We're going to put all of this into practice with a hands-on demo, so let's dive right in. But before doing so, I just want to deliver a very quick message. If you find these DevOps tutorials helpful, consider subscribing to this channel for more DevOps and cloud native content. Also, I recommend checking out our complete Kubernetes course, Kubernetes training, learn K8 from zero to cloud. Uh, Kubernetes is the industry standard for managing cloud native applications. And this course will teach you everything that you need to know in less than seven hours. Link for that is inside the video description. And there should also be a link on the top right of your screen through the YouTube info card. Anyways, enough about that. Let's begin your demo. This GitHub repository contains all of the starter code that you'll need for this tutorial. I left you a link to it inside of the video description. So please make sure that you go to this repo, click on the link in the description, and then once you're here, clone this repo inside a directory of your choice. I'm going to clone it inside of a folder that I called YouTube tutorial. Okay. Git clone, clone it there. Once you have that set up, launch it into a text editor of your choice. My default is Visual Studio Code. I'm going to go ahead and spin up a new terminal session and we can begin. All right, so first things first, inside of this Docker folder, I left you a docker compose.yaml file that contains everything you need to set all of this up. So first things first, uh, we need a PostgreSQL da database, a PostgreSQL database to run in the background, which will store all of the key cloak data. We're also going to be running an instance of Keycloak as a container as well. And that's really all I want to show you. You can feel free to drill through this docker compose.yaml file if you want to, but essentially we're just running these two containers with the command docker compose up. Simple as that. The setup is already done for you. No configuration file because I need to actually go into the docker folder so it can find the docker compose.yaml file. Uh, allow it to pull all the images that it needs to pull, run Postgres and Keycloak, and that's it. I'll be back in a second. Cool. Now it's listening on localhost 8080. Once you get this message, you should be able to go to the following path, the following endpoint. Here we see the administration console. We can use the admin console to interact with Keycloak and set up our authentication pathway there. So Postgres isn't something we interact with. Keycloak interacts with Postgres in order to save all of the data that we set up there. So Keycloak uses the following database username and password to authenticate with Postgres. We use the following uh, admin username and password to interact with the admin console and create all of our stuff there. All right, let's work some magic. Now I've already done this exact same tutorial, but in a Kubernetes environment and nothing changes. So I'm not gonna redo the tutorial. All I'm gonna say is for your Docker Compose environment, make sure that you're accessing the admin console via localhost 8080. For the Kubernetes environment, you're gonna see localhost 30,080. Just ignore that. Keep the following port and follow along with the tutorial I'm gonna play right now. The first thing we want to do is create a realm. I'm going to create a new realm, which I'm going to call test realm. Oh, we got a suggestion right here. Beautiful. Go ahead and create it. So a realm, what it is, is it's an authentication space. Um, let me go back to my diagram. It's a container that holds all of our authentication components. So everything we configure for authentication, our users, the roles they can have, and valid ways to authenticate, they will all live inside of this realm. 
So we're creating a test realm, which will be our dedicated space for testing this authentication flow. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is create a client. So go to clients, create client. Now, you'll remember from our diagram, a client defines a valid way to request authentication. So when we register a client, we're telling Keycloak that uh, whatever requests come from this client, these are valid authentication requests and should be taken seriously, okay? So whatever user is trying to access some protected resource, they will need to include that client secret Sorry, guys, we have this guy who decides to really disturb me when I'm recording. Uh, one sec. Uh, so as I was saying, uh, the user is going to need to include this client secret for Keycloak to even consider authenticating them, all right, provided that they also give uh, valid user credentials. Just making sure he doesn't jump on again. All right. Anyways, uh, so the client ID, I'm just going to call it test client. Simple as that. Uh, go ahead and click next. We want to enable client authentication. So this gives our client the secret uh, that I mentioned before uh, that it needs that must be included with all authentication requests. All right. Now for redirect URIs, this is required by Keycloak, Keycloak but it's more relevant for single sign-on scenarios where users need to be redirected back to web applications after logging in. For our direct authentication flow demo, we won't really use redirects, but it's something we need to include regardless. So let's just go ahead and do it. All right. Uh, again, when I teach single sign-on, this will eventually be more relevant. Um, so yeah, do subscribe so that you don't miss out on that tutorial. We'll go ahead and click save. And that's pretty much it. Nothing else we need to do for the client. Now, the next thing we need to do is now that we have a valid client secret that can be used to make authentication requests, we need users with roles that they can use to access uh, protected resources. All right, so we'll go ahead to the users tab. We'll create a new user. So I'll create a user, call him test user. We'll just say user at gmail.com. Uh, it doesn't have to be anything valid. First name, uh, we'll just call him test user. All right, go ahead and create that. So now the user has been created. Let's assign this user a role. So within the realm, we're going to create a bunch of roles. So we'll go to realm roles. One role could be that whichever user is given this role has access to whatever API endpoint. So we'll call this role name API access. And that's really all I want to do for this realm role. And so a user needs to be assigned a particular role in order to access uh, uh, protected resources. So we'll go back to role mapping. We'll assign this user a role. Uh, the realm role we're going to give them is API access. All right, beautiful. Now we can go to credentials. We need to give that user a password. So we'll set the password to be test password. All right. Uh, click off. We don't want the password to be temporary. And save the password. Beautiful. Now the realm role that we gave them uh, it'll be more relevant when we actually have APIs that we want to protect. And so we define what roles can access which endpoints, thereby granting the user specific access to certain endpoints within an API. But in this case, we just have a general realm role API access that we have for demo purposes, just to illustrate the fact that users need roles and valid credentials in order to be authenticated and the role dictates what protected resource they can actually have access to. 
But for the purposes of this demo, we're just going to have our users uh, access some standard key cloak endpoints. So, so within the same GitHub repository, I left you a link that you can use to download Postman if you don't already have that set up. So feel free to click this link and it should allow you to download for either Mac or Windows. Anyways, um, and within your starter project, there is a Postman JSON, which once, lo which once loaded into Postman itself, uh, will allow you to load the collection that I created for you. So make sure that you import it. All right, we're gonna import the following file that is inside of YouTube tutorial. Well, the directory where I cloned uh, my repo, but it'll be different for you. All right, so now go on get access token. This is a URL that can be used so that the user upon successful authentication can be given the token that they need to access whatever resource we let them access. All right, so uh, this is the URL that you can use to actually make that request. And obviously the host will depend on whether you're doing local testing or you're doing things in production. All right, so the test client, I remember the client is what allows us to make valid authentication requests. Uh, test client is indeed what our client is called, just to make sure. All right, and if we go to, and if I click on test client, I can grab their client secret that is needed to make a valid authentication request. So I'll put that there. Grant type will leave it as password because the user will rely on a username and password as credentials. Test user and test password is what I set up, but if you wanna verify, make sure that you go back to users, click on your test users. You'll see the username test user um, along with the password that gets created, um, you should have made it as test password, but whatever it is, make sure that you input the right one. Uh, go ahead and send that request for a token. Beautiful. Uh, we get an access token that the user can use to access a protected resource, and we get a refresh token that the user can use to refresh their access token. All right, so what I can do now is use this access token to access the protected resource, which in this case is a standard key cloak endpoint that provides user info. It's just a get request that now uh, the following user, test user, is capable of making, provided that they include the access token that they were given. All right, so now they can make a request to this protected resource, include the bearer access token right over here. Now, using this token, will they actually be able to uh, retrieve this protected resource, get this valuable user info? Um, let's find out. Indeed, they can. They were given access to this sensitive data because they ensured, because they included the token that was given them upon their authentication request being approved. All right, now for the refresh token. So what this allows you to do is generate another access token without the user having to log in again, without having to re-input their user credentials, okay? So this is useful if in 10 minutes from now their original access token expires and they just wanna refresh the token using the refresh token that they were given. So as you can see, uh, this access token expires every 300 seconds, so every five minutes. Um, but we can use this refresh token, let me make sure I copied it right, to generate a new access token. We gotta include the client secret as well to uh, tell KeyCloak that this is a valid request. All right send this over and we get a new access token and we can use this new access token to access the same protected resources as before. All right, so let me go ahead and paste this in, send this over, beautiful. And now when I wanna log out, um, we you can do that by uh, sending the following request to the logout path. And what we can do is use the client secret and the refresh token to 
I guess, disable all sessions and disable the refresh token so that uh, the person isn't allowed to use it again to create a new token. All right, so uh, the refresh token we need to disable is the following. Uh, the client secret, we have a copy of it here. Send this over. We've logged out, 204, no content, beautiful. And now let's clean up. All right, this is Rayanne again from the Docker Compose tutorial. So we're ready to stop um, our containers. Then to make sure that everything gets terminated, uh, nothing's running in the background, we're gonna say Docker Compose down. Once we do that, we're gonna say Docker System Prune A to get rid of everything we've got. And that's all for the cleanup. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe in order to get access to more DevOps content. And if you wanna freshen up on your Kubernetes skills, please make sure to check out our Kubernetes training course to support this channel, uh, Learn K8 from Zero to Cloud. It has everything from basic uh, Kubernetes deployments to advanced implementations. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. All right, see you in the next one.